Welcome to the Three Piece Podcast, a show where three Call of Duty amateurs discuss player development to improve your in-game performance. New episodes every Monday at 7 a.m. EST to start your week off with a scoop of inspiration. We have the undisputed, most positive person in our community. Personally, a huge inspiration for me when it comes to personal development. And I'm sure he can serve as an inspiration to a lot of you listening. So, the one and only Max Kabibbo at Lights Fire. How you doing today, my man? I'm doing good. I seriously appreciate you guys having me. I've actually always wanted to do a podcast, like seriously. So, this is like super cool to actually get the opportunity to do this. So, it means a lot. Seriously. Yeah, no, man. We're really glad to have you on. And like we were talking about earlier on is you're probably the perfect person that I really wanted to have on this because really my goal for this whole podcast, like I was saying, is really all about, you know, mental well-being. And, you know, playing a lot of Call of Duty really takes its toll on you, especially when you're competing. And, you know, you're putting your everything into it. You don't give a fuck about the rest of the world. You're only focused on Call of Duty. And, you know, everything adds up over time. So, uh, yeah, you know, what are what are some of the things that you've personally dealt with over the years of competing that now as you're taking a break that you're trying to recover from? Well, I, w- I would definitely say, like, like to start, like, the, b- the countless hours just putting in to just competing and perfecting a craft is, like, I think it's very um, overlooked like it's actually really hard work because i always talk about like a lot of my friends like a lot of my friends like actually tell people that like i stream and i compete and stuff like that and they're like oh that's cool you make money playing video games but like it's like actually a lot of work especially on the streaming side so i found myself like for a very long time like getting really down on myself especially towards the streaming end rather than competing like that's a totally different story like seeing viewership that's low when i had like a lot especially like after bo4 like i had a really good season like BO4 was the best I ever was in streaming and competing and everything. And um, being out of that, like, towards MW, like, seeing all my numbers being really low, I wasn't doing too well competing, I didn't really like the game, it takes a really big toll on your mind. And, like, I I genuinely, like, I I normally don't, I don't throw the word depressed around lightly, but I was depressed for a while. Like, I will say, like, I think for the majority of this year um, and, like, the the end of, bo4 i think i really did struggle with like my mental health and i struggled a lot with depression so i think something that i realized to this year from this year uh that i'm going to bring into the next cod and that i've done throughout the years is like i think balance is super important like what i would do is i just hop on like i'd literally just hop on get on and grind because like you need to put a lot of work in if you want to be really good but what i'm going to do i think from now on is like actually eat breakfast before i play actually like do things that are good for my day like i like i wouldn't even like take a shower i just get on stream and just go you know wouldn't mm-hmm. eat wouldn't do anything so i think it's super important to like actually like get outside eat food drink water see your family and like i think a healthy balance is like super important and like actually set around set aside that time to grind because you're not gonna be able to do anything if you don't grind so yeah especially yeah. now in the off season like on the past few podcasts we've really been preaching right now is the time that people should be focusing on on their health their, yeah their, their health you know especially with the world that we're in right now it's a very important yeah. time and uh like you were saying you, you dealt with a good bit of these issues throughout the time and i know you're personally not the only player to take that step back you know players like havoc and pristini have personally stepped back because yeah. you know they we're dealing with these same issues so what do you think people like you and them can really benefit from when you actually play a game after this long time that you've taken away do you think you have this fire under you or do you think that you're at a little bit of a disadvantage because you know you're coming off of that off off year so i think that i actually i really do think that like a full like i think passion is like one of the most important parts in call of duty to be honest so like if you're playing and you're competing without and you're kind of burnt out um i think a break is like super important so i was seeing in myself that like i really didn't like mw um my internet was lagging there was just so many factors that were against me so like everything was just pushing me to not play the game um and what i've seen is that I actually am really excited for this next game. Like, I genuinely am. And I I will, I will, would have said that, like, I probably wasn't going to compete. Like, I even said in the video um, that I created because I needed to create a video publicly so I can actually step away and not freaking, like, 
keep trying this, you know, like I needed to like make that action step to do so. So I, I will say that like, like, I think it's, I think it's super important to take breaks when you find it necessary. And for, for me doing so, I actually genuinely feel like I actually have a lot of passion going this next year. I gen, I feel like if this game is good, I will, I genuinely believe that my stream will be probably the healthiest it's ever been. And my competitive and competing i think that i will be probably the best i've ever been i truly do believe that and i think that's because i took that step that time to step back and reflect on what i had all the good things that i had for me because what you realize is that a lot of the times you kind of get you don't you you get uh you don't appreciate what you actually had you know mm-hmm. you don't appreciate how good you actually were or you don't appreciate the times you're in because like like i i think that what i realized like i took bo4 for granted like it was amazing i quit for fortnite to compete in fortnite for a little bit and that was it was a good decision for me because i i know for a fact i would have been looking back and saying like oh what if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. because like the world cup but it was a bad decision because i had 500 something subscribers i was averaging 75 to 100 viewers every single stream and i haven't even been able to get back there you know um but i think it's super important to just keep that in mind and like i have now have the most passion i ever had and because i took those steps back and those and that time where i actually took off to really focus on myself and get my mental health back up i truly do believe like if if this game is good you will see me on the top keep keep that in mind you heard it here first yeah no i i completely agree man in aw for a little bit i mean this was way back but uh i took i took a small break it was for like two or three months and i came back and I was like better than ever, like genuinely. It was it was so weird because, you know, um, I had a huge drive back in the day. I mean, like after like go say W, that's all I did. All I did was play COD, and uh, when I took uh, part of it was because like I had to because the school school was kind of a lot back then, um, <laughs> surprisingly. But um, I came back, man, and it, you know it really does do a lot. And at, from then on, from BO3 all the way up until BO4, all I did really was like play COD. I mean, I I still did other things, but like. Mainly it was COD, and I, I kind of realized coming out of BO4, since I, especially me being underage, I had I, I had very little motivation to do anything. That's and D scene yeah. was like sketchy. Like I'm sure you can attest to that. Um, it's nothing compared to what it was back in BO3, man. Or yeah. IW even. I mean, e- even for, from BO3 and onwards, I mean, like it, it's just been going downhill. And uh, me being in the S and D community mainly, and a lot of my friends becoming 18, my circle became smaller, and I just kind of. I think I, for me personally, I took a I took a year away for, during MW, and uh, you know if I do come back, which I probably will for uh, the next Call of Duty, um, you know my motivation is also is definitely very high. Because I feel yeah. like, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, um, uh, with the whole break thing, uh, we've talked about this a couple of times. But like my break was middle World War Two throughout Black Ops Four, and that was really because I. Uh, I was starting to get overweight, and so I had dropped all sports, and so I picked up lacrosse, and that kind of came a new passion over COD. Oh, yeah. And then I got injured, which is weird because it's almost, to me, like it was like, in a weird way, it's kind of like a sign, like, hey, you're injured. You're going to be home a lot. Like, just get on COD. You're turning 18 pretty soon. Just grind it out. And so as broken of a game MW was and as controversial it is for people to say that, like, they were really good at MW going into next year. Like MW is by far my best individual performance uh, across any COD. And so I think knowing going into Cold War, knowing that'll be first season where I'll be 18 all year, so I'll be able to compete all year. I think that really has the passion going right now. And I think think taking that break kind of helps because some people can sit there and just grind and grind and grind for eight years, but kind of like what Liam the same and like eventually you kind of just lose that passion over time and you need to kind of reset it yeah Yeah. i totally agree yeah couldn't agree more you know one of the things that obviously you know it takes a lot to build that passion you know and if you really have that passion for it you're it's going to come natural but it's going to burn out inevitably so if you have to build a really healthy relationship with that passion and one of the things that a lot of people do is try to throw all their eggs in one basket and I know me personally, I, I've thought about it, but some people, you know, it would work better for me. Instance, like if I stayed at work, you know, staying that time at work, you're sitting there daydreaming about things you'd rather be doing than, yeah. you know, 
if you're sitting at home and you have the ability to play COD all day, inevitably you're going to be better than the people that are at work, but you're going to burn out a lot sooner than those people. So I think there really needs to be a push for this balance. And although, you know, hustling, obviously you have to hustle. You have to work your ass off, but you have to find a good balance with that. And I want to know, so what are some ways that you're going to invest the time that you took in this off season and take those habits and, and, you know, bring them into your daily routine while you're trying to compete? Well, I think something that I really learned this year <laughs> is like the importance of like not trying to do everything. You know, I think for me as a person, I, I like to do everything. Like literally, like, I mean, this off season, I am learning to code. I, I oh, am shit. day trading stocks and currencies. Damn. Like I've been, I've been working really hard. I've learned, yeah. I took an economics course. I've taken an accounting course. I've taken uh, a statistics course. Like I've worked really hard because my mind, the way that I work, I just want to know everything. I want to learn everything. And yeah. something that I realized is that during all these games that I played, like Black Ops 4, Black Ops 3, all these, actually Black Ops 3 wasn't one, but all, all the newer games, I was always playing another video game. I was always doing other things and my focus wasn't always on that. So mm -hmm. I think for me, to answer that question, I think for me personally, I think one of the most important things is I want to zero down on the things that are really important to me. So the things that are really important to me are my family, um, my faith, my competing and my stream, and I think day trading and, and my friends, but everybody's in school right now and it's COVID, so it's kind of hard. But mm -hmm. so, so those are like the main ones. So, okay, I, now that I narrowed that down, I have so many other passions and stuff and things I like to do. And oh, I like working man. out yeah. too. But, but you need to really like narrow down your focus if you actually want to get good at something. So like this entire off season, like I was spending months and months, like I spent six or so months every single morning um, learning how to trade currencies. Every single, one well, of the hardest things I've ever done. Now I'm starting to see success, but it's because I was narrowing down. I set that slot time every single day. So I think to answer that question, I think for me personally, like going into this next game, I think I really need to, understand my discipline and the time that I'm going to allot myself to play and grind and get good. So I don't know if that answered the question. I yeah, no, it that actually it, it answered it pretty perfectly. And it actually sparks a question is, have you ever looked into the YouTube space of personal development, such as YouTubers like Matt Diavella, or if you know yep. Nathaniel Drew, uh, since you know who those people are, who are some of your biggest inspirations? Give three since we're on the three, three piece three my biggest inspirations oh uh, do they have to be just youtubers or like oh no 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 just like in life general well like like in, life in general i think um i think um for content creators i think uh mutex is really one of them I, I i've seen that guy like he's got a lot of controversy around his name really good friend of mine we competed together for a while um but he's one of the hardest working people i've ever met in my entire life and now he's actually seeing success because of that so i think one of the people that I, I think I owe a lot of one I owe a lot of success to but I also like just respect the heck out of is Mutex because he had so much going for him and then a Ain't lot crap right. happened yeah. and now he's back on top and bigger than he was going to be and like that's because he just didn't lose heart so I think that's one of the the, the people that I really look up to um I don't necessarily know if I have three. A lot of I really do like Matt uh, Diavel. I think that um, I think there's a lot of people I, I like look up to. I think, but like personally, I think Mutex is a big one of them, and that's what I, I think that that's a, that would that would be my answer. I think for right now, that's that's a, I, I'm really motivated by myself. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, like, yeah. I, I I try not to. What I realize is like me focusing on other people in the community, which is a another part of this conversation like i would watch a lot of streamers uh that were around the same level as me blow up during mw and i was thinking oh i could be that um i try oh, i yeah. that i um really decided this year especially that i'm not going to really like focus on anybody else and i'm going to focus on myself every day and yeah. i'm going to grind every day so I, I think that's really important as well just to focus on yourself because people can get really absorbed and and start focusing on like other people and comparing themselves to others i mean like i for me personally it's never really affected me too much but i've definitely been in that situation where i mean i'm sure you guys can kind of like put the puzzle pieces together but i've seen people around me like explode and in a lot of like um success off of things that i feel like you know i could as well but i didn't or at least not as much as them um 
and I never really let it get to me, but I can definitely understand how it can. And, uh, you know, you can't help but sometimes feel a little jealous. I, you know, jealousy, like, as long as you don't act upon it, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, you can't help but feel, like, human emotions. Do you know what I mean? I did feel a little jealous, but, like, you know, I never let it, you know, get to me. I never acted upon it. Yeah. But, uh... I think there's a very healthy balance that you can build with jealousy. I know me personally, I'm very motivated by jealousy, you know. Yeah. There's, yeah. I personally, you know, I grew up, I, I was a little insecure kid. So when I would see other people, oh, yeah. you know, I, I had really bad ADHD. <laughs> so, you know, performance insecurity is a, a very real thing with that. Yeah. So seeing other people doing things that I know I could personally be doing and they're doing better than me definitely took its toll on me. So when I would see my friends going to these events like, I know my friend Logan Remark personally. He went to UMG. He was getting gassed up by all these pros, getting placed very well. He was the talk of the town all over at the very end of Ghost. And I was like, damn, bro, I was just teaming with you two weeks ago. And yeah. seeing that, that jealousy just sparked me to say, fuck lacrosse. And I eventually came right back to COD. And I honestly, if it wasn't Same for that me, jealousy man. trait, I probably wouldn't have been competing now. I If I wasn't jealous... I wouldn't see these content creators and be like, damn, I can do this kind of stuff, if not better. So why not try? So I feel like if you can build that relationship um, and not act upon it and you know, use it. Militantly. Right. It can't be toxic. Yeah. Like you, you can't yeah. use it maliciously. Like, I don't know if you guys follow me on, I, you know, look at what I'm going, but I don't sit here and just talk shit to people, you know, even though I envy them, you know, I still try. I don't to think any of us them. do. <laughs> no, it'd be toxic. I, um, I kind of feel like, cod takes or just esports in general takes so much of like uh mental toughness in the sense of being able to take something like jealousy because i'm the same way like um especially after like coming back from the year and a half break and seeing all these people that are considered like top ams now and it's like i used to be better than those that's kids that's or even or like, even pros man yeah yeah some like, of these pros like you know we're not dropping uh, names but i totally know uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally but, it. but it but it's uh i mean it's one of those things where it's like if you have the mental toughness for it i think it definitely can drive you yeah. um or like even if you develop it over time like i developed it so like as a like earlier on in jetpacks when i was like 14 15 and you're extra emotional at that age you kind of that jealousy kind of turns into like i guess anger you could say instead of motivation and so it's yeah. kind of like you kind of just get pissed off you play worse it gets in your head um but i think now that i've matured jealousy kind of is kind of just fuels the passion pit kind of makes it like all right well i know i know what i can do so i need to stop subtweeting about it and just do it i like that a lot and i, I actually really like i really really resonate with what you said about how like it would ang make you angry. Like, I, I think that's something that I realized, like, a lot this year was that I was angry. Like, I, I, I was I was upset with, one, myself, and then I was comparing myself to people who I freaking love and I'm so proud of. And I was thinking that I could be in that position. And I truly do believe with all my heart I could have been and right. still can be. But I was I, – but how is that going to change my outcome? Like, I, I really like – um. What you said, Graceless, like, because I think that it's like there's two opposites. Like, like you can either let that fuel you or it can bring you down. So for me personally, it brought me down, and I was sitting there, I was I wasn't getting better, I wasn't changing my life, I wasn't making action steps towards my goals. I was plainly just sulking and regretting decisions that I made. And I truly believe everything happens for a reason. So I think that like me even making these decisions, I, I, I think that I would not feel this fire that I feel in me to compete and to like actually be the best that I can be. And I truly don't think that I would even have the knowledge like I like this year and trying to day trade currencies like I've said this a few times, but it's one it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Nothing even close. And just sitting there every single day and taking losses and just wondering why in a market that just makes no sense, it made it was very difficult. And and once I started seeing success, it really fueled me. I was like, wow, I can do this with anything. I truly, I literally can do this yeah. with anything. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> like anything. So I think it's super important to not compare yourself to other people. Uh, and and it really, yeah, like like Grace said, like it, it really depends on the person. Like for me, it it wasn't good for me and i and that's what i had to change like that's what i changed this year i was i i deleted twitter for a while too i would do it on and off I, and like as bad as it sounds i even muted a, cer a certain group of like people that were like great friends of mine but they're doing great and it would bother me because i'm like i could be there so yeah i don't, I don't blame you for that at all like seriously it's like you know it, it's human emotion and you know 
you know, do whatever's best for you. It's not like, you know, you you, dis, you start disliking them or you're going to start talking trash to them. It's, you know, it's all about you at the end of the day. And it's like, it's not harming anybody. So. No, for sure. And uh, so, shit, I completely blanked what I was going to say, bro. I mm-hmm. had this idea. Someone else take this wheel. I have to, but I think it's something else. Colby, do you have anything that you would like to share in the way of, you know, you go to the gym all the time. So how do you think that really helps your mental health in game? Because there's uh, going wor- and working out is a, a sort of a mindfulness practice. Yeah. I don't know if you really look at it that way, but it, it genuinely is. So that can really ease all the out of game stresses and it really gets it out. So what do you think? I think um, it it helps me a lot personally because it helps me get the alter egos out of me as strange as it may seem. I feel like there's three versions of me. There's the athlete in me, there's the gamer in me, and there's just my normal self. And so I think whenever I do anything gym related, sports related, I enter this different mindset. And uh, it's kind of, it's really corny to say like when you're not in the zone and you're kind of like casually talking about it, like when people say you got to have that dog in you, like it's, I feel like it's so true. It's some real shit, man. Like it's like, for example, like casually I'll listen to like lo-fi music, like whenever I'm shooting bots or anything like that. When I go into the gym, it's murder rap as people <laughs> call it. Like it's really aggressive. It's, you just enter this different zone for me. And so I think it helps to get it out then and not, um, for example, like, take out that anger on COD. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think, because I think in COD, it's almost the same way. You just can't have the anger side involved with it. You just got to, you just got to find that, uh, I think it's called the flow state. Mm-hmm. Like when people yeah. say like they're in the zone or like they're just feeling it in the moment, like that flow state. And you just got to, I feel like over time, you kind of learn how to get yourself into that without having to play for like three days straight or this certain routine. Like I find myself almost better off just getting on and playing right away yeah. instead of staying like getting on an extra hour and a half early shooting bots. Cause I just play better, like coming fresh off. Cause you kind of just throw that music on while you're waiting in the lobby and then you jump into scrims and you're just frying. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I know for me personally, I actually funny thing is, uh, I mean, Max, you've teamed with me a lot on land and, uh, I, you you know you're big like at least when we team I'm sure you still do it a little bit but like you you worked out a lot and you talked a lot about like just like health and stuff you know I've I've always been on that but like especially like when I stepped down from COD for this past year like all I did was like live in the gym and like I was I'm super active I'm the most healthy I've ever been yeah um you know you were one of my motivations you know along with like a lot of other people uh, in my life but you were definitely one of them because like you were in the COD community you were so like healthy do you know what I mean health oriented um. But, uh, and I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Okay. So, yeah, no, but, um, I don't, I, I think health's, you know, r- really important for me. It, it helps me clear my mind. Like, Colby was talking about having, like, alter egos. I never, that's never something I really had to deal with. Like, I, I felt like in everything in life, my life, I always carry myself as kind of like the same person. Yeah. But, uh, one thing I will say is that it definitely helps clear my mind and help me, like, act to what I want to be. Cause, you know, at least for me working out, like, you know, you, you can have a lot of pent up stress or you're just not feeling good. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. even the small things, like not feeling good, like, you know, you can snap on someone a little bit easier or like, you know, you're just not as motivated or, you know, you, man, people really underestimate health. Like it can really yeah. do a lot for you. And I think for me personally with working out, going a lot of runs it I, it makes me feel more comfortable with sitting down for such a longer period of time oh, yeah. because and it, and it makes me feel good while doing it too. Like I don't feel like a slouch, you know. Hundred so, uh, percent. I, I mean, and like there's like that the phrase "healthy body, healthy mind." Uh, I and I truly do believe that. Like my parents would always tell me, like, and I, I think this is just their their incentive to make me work out growing up. That like, oh, it would make me play better because like my reaction time would be faster and all these things because I'm a workout. My parents are personal trainers and health mm-hmm. coaches, so like I grew up with this stuff. And I uh, personally, great. I truly do believe that. Like I, I think that I mean, like there are people that are good and that aren't healthy. But I, yeah. I, I think that 
you are like it makes sense like i mean if like if you are overweight like super overweight and you're playing baseball your reaction time is gonna be slower you're gonna be be running slower so like i think that like being able to like train your mind and eat healthy and work out is like super important for your reaction time and for honestly just decision making in general like i i remember like i would eat really crappy one my face would break out which stunk but i would eat really crappy but my mind was like really clouded and i was like really like i, I like i'm not a good speaker but i was way worse because i would just didn't i couldn't spit anything out so i mean like for me personally like eating healthy has been super important for me like in my competitive season because I actually got to be on top of my game, especially when I'm entertaining and competing. Like that, that's, that's a different story, you know? Yeah. And I think we touched on that in the first podcast. We were talking about how uh, we kind of feel like gamers, at least in the COD scene, uh, kind of get every, every sport. Yeah. 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 Just just gamers in general can get away with being unhealthy. And it's like the small things of like getting your water in, like you can't just live off of, 200 grams of Adderall, G Fuel, and Graham Crackers. I I couldn't agree more. And honestly, like, one of my motivations uh, that I just remembered is actually Sensor. Like, especially growing up in, like, game... I've I've been in the COD community for seven years, I think. Yeah, like, seven years or so. Maybe even a little bit longer. Yeah, so... I've been here for a long time. And I've watched, like, Sensor pretty much get jacked in that time. You know what I mean? And, And, like, how he, like, pushes that importance of, like, keeping your body healthy so you can compete and like i always thought that was so cool i'm like this guy is literally jacked out of his mind and he's like he's like a good player i don't care what anybody says i think he's a good player like i truly do believe that and i think he's pretty underrated but i i think that i think it's (laughs) i think it's super super important to keep your body healthy honestly very very important yeah no i agree with you i think sensor's pretty underrated uh i I personally always look bro i understand from a player perspective it's a little bit different but when it comes to like branding, bro, he's killing it. Not even he's... that, but like as a competitor, he just does not quit, dude. Yeah, like that's this guy gets brought down so much, he gets excuse my French, but he gets shit on like by people and in game and doesn't get discouraged and he just keeps grinding and he keeps getting better. And I'm not saying he's like the best player in the world, but I think that he is honestly better than a lot of people that have names. Like I I will say that. And I think that if he actually really, really got a chance, I think he'd be pretty good. I think like, if he actually started in the beginning of a game. So. Look, Is bro. he benched now? Or I, I, I'm I don't not caught up. I don't, he, I, don't, um, I don't follow either. I, I believe what happened was, was there was something up with subcontracts. So subs had to decide at the beginning of the game, I believe, um, whether, or I'm sorry, the franchises had to decide <laughs> if they're going to let their subs play challengers or not. Oh, Sub, yeah. Subliners said no. So uh, when Sensor got benched, he couldn't really Sensor do anything. Live. <laughs> and so it kind of turned into like the whole Dashy situation, for example, yeah. where Dashy couldn't play in Challengers. And then, I mean, thankfully he got that opportunity in Champs to show that like he can come after not not playing for seven weeks. Yeah. But on the underrated note, um, I kind of feel that way about Parasite in a way. Not necessarily underrated, but just the drive he has, the amount of bad clips of him out there, the amount of people who drag him down just because he's overweight, for example, or because he gets shit on in a game. Like he just is just so well mentally driven. He just took a team of AMs to what third at challengers finals or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like it's so encouraging to see somebody who was on top and isn't really anymore because of decisions he'd make, but still, he's still going every single time. Like he's still grinding. He's playing with people that quite frankly, he's a lot better than in my opinion, has a lot more experience than, and he just does not quit. And I think that is so motivating to me. So motivating. There's a lot of players just like him that I think are super valuable to teams, not only in the way of gameplay because they've been in the game for so long, you know, they've kind of been through these situations that, Regardless of the situation, you know, of the situation of the game, they can kind of translate it. But mm. I feel like also they're out of game things, you know. Since, like we were saying, their mental resilience it plays a huge part in what they are doing and what they're mm. bringing to the team. You know, there's a lot of people that they can say, "Ha, oh, bro, we just scrimmed for 16 hours. I'm, I'm not gonna watch vods." Then there's other people that, that 16 hours isn't enough for them, and then yeah. they want to sit down, they want to continue to shoot bots after that, and it's like, you know, people like that 
and as well as creating content and bringing eyes there. I don't see why people like that are so slept on. I understand, you know, skill does play a big part, but it's pretty obvious, you know, in this day and age, you know, everybody's favorite thing in this community is name over skill. So I don't yep. see why players that bring such a big value and as well as following to these teams are being overlooked. What I do agree. you think? I think I, I, I couldn't agree more. I actually think that's like a, a really big problem. And like what you said with name over skill, like I think that, oh, I mean, like in the perfect world, I wish it was never that, to be honest. Yeah. But I will say that, I mean, I'm a, I do believe I'm a good competitor, but I think that a lot of people play with me because of my name, because of my followers, because of my Twitch following and people like me because I'm nice. And like, I think that's a big reason why people play with me. So, I mean, in a perfect world, I think it's, it should always be skill and, and mm -hmm. it always should always be the hours put in. But I think a good attitude is also very overlooked. I feel like, and that goes back to exactly what we were saying. Like, I mean, I think like health is just so important. Like, like, I mean, I think it was Liam that was saying like working out, like he doesn't get as angry when he actually works out and he like actually like takes out that like negative energy in the gym or bench pressing or running. And like, I think that's like super important. And, you know full disclosure like not everybody can has that opportunity to and also not everybody has that like upbringing to know to do that you know like, yeah, a lot yeah. of people have very different backgrounds unfortunately we, we're not able to pick mm -hmm. the family that we are born into so like a lot of people oh, yeah. are really born into negativity and they don't they don't have anything different that's why like a big thing that i show in my life it's like um like i'm like i'm a really big christian so like i i like I, my my motto is just like showing people love because like that if god loved me then i'm supposed to show other people love so i mean like love is patient love is kind so like i try to like even when these people are super negative and really mean to me it's like i have to see that person for like who they are rather than their actions like their this circumstances person is hurt this mm -hmm. person is hurt he wouldn't even like i always think about this like hurt if he people hurt people exactly if this person if this person had the understanding that i had then he wouldn't be saying that stuff to me so like why would i even get upset when he's like oh you're ugly or you're this i'm like thanks like okay like you know like cool <laughs> like i, I understand and that's only because i know who i am you know yeah and it's a it's know? a cycle it's a cycle it man it's like cycle. i mean i have so many friends who have like tough households and you know i'm blessed to have a great like you know family and it's you know it's tough to see sometimes my friends like going through shit but, uh, you know, one thing I will say is that, you know, friends can really, like, save you, like, even if you have, like, you know, a bad family. And I think it's, you know, really important for people who do understand, like, what you said, Max, like, you know, it's why I get upset when, you know, they're going through something, like, um, and they're talking shit to you. But, you know, when you look at their background and, like, the stuff they're going through, like, you know, they didn't have the same upbringing as you, so why get mad? I think that's really important for people to, like, have that mindset because you can help other people get out of, you know, the stuff they're going through. I, you just I mean, have to be patient. Yeah, hundred percent. And 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 it is hard. It's I, I. It's one of the hardest things. Like I'm not perfect. Like I, a lot of people have this vision of me that I'm perfect. Like I remember like times where I like shot people's bodies or like I thought you were good vibes. I'm like, hello. <laughs> like, what? I never said I was good vibes. It's or not a big like, deal, anyways, man. People I'm gas like, shoot your body. body. So much. I'm just trying to get in your head, homie. And it worked, it Nova. <laughs> but like, I think that um, I think that it's just it's really like important to like actually like see the person for who they are and like to take yourself out of the situation. Oh, I remember what I was saying like, it's important to do your best to detach yourself from that emotion, see the person for who they are. And it is hard. Like it really is. It truly is. Like I, I even have times where I get frustrated and like, I, I don't, I, ne I pretty much almost never react. And sometimes I say stuff, I it, very rarely, but like, I, it's like, you can't like and it, it, it's only because of my pride i'm like oh like this guy's talking trash to me i'm like i know i'm a good player i know i'm a nice guy i know i'm this i'm like why are you saying all these things but i have to like constantly remind myself that i'm like if this person was like comfortable and loved who he was and actually had like an identity then he would not be saying all these things to me like he has no reason to like, I, have, I have no reason to talk trash to anybody at all yeah, same like, here. None. you know like i'm blessed i seriously am and like not saying everything in my life is perfect I got a lot of crap going on, but I, I, I choose to see the blessings and I choose to go out of my way to showcase that to other people too. You know, I am like, I will talk about the crap that's going on, but I think it's important to be positive. So, yeah, no, I, I saw your TikToks that, you know, I was going to download it and go through and watch them, but I'm super against TikTok. So I just watched the ones that you posted, but uh, yeah. 
either way, man, you know, seeing some of the things that you had to say, um, and like you were just saying, man, you really have your mind screwed on in the right way. And obviously, like you were saying, your parents play a huge role in that. And, you know, your upbringing is crucial. So what are some ways that, you know, other than just your mindset and, you know, you're saying your parents are, you know, personal trainers and developers, like, what is one of the biggest things that you do on a day-to-day basis that you don't see anyone else doing, you know, that really you think makes you unique in the way of your health regimens? That's a really good question. Um, well, I, I think um, I think something that's really underrated is, like, if you have good family, good friends, like, really actually, like, taking the time to spend time with those people. Um, like, I think a lot of like even what you just said, like about my parents, like a lot of the reason I am the way I am and I'm healthy is because when I have something going on in my life, even when I don't want to talk about it, I go out of my way to talk about it. Like I'm very prideful in the sense that I help a lot of people. So I feel as if I don't really need the help, but I've been forcing myself to talk to people. Like even yesterday, I went and did like a counseling session. Like I, I hate, like I hate talking about my problems, but it's super important. So like I go out of my way and I talk to my friends, I talk to my family and I'm just really open and honest about the things that are going on in my life. So that one, I don't have to take that on to video games. I don't have to take that on to streaming. I don't have to take that on to anything. So I think like something that's been really crucial to my life. That's very different is that I'm very, I try to be very close with my family. Um, I try to keep the people in my life very close and I try to like make sure I'm always there for them. And I know that they're always there for me. And not, like I said, like not everybody's blessed to have that, have these people in their lives, but Mm -hmm. you, you, you can find them if you look for them. You have to like know what you want and you have to be very strict with what the people that you surround yourself with. So. Yeah, no, designing your environment and obviously mm. the people you're around plays a huge part in obviously who you are from a day to day. Um, obviously, like you were saying, your parents played a huge role, but what are some of the people and teammates that have played a huge role in mm. who you are today? Because obviously they can serve as a parent to you in that sense. Well, I think like on the competitive sense, Mutex, biggest one out of yeah. everything. Mm. I, I feel as if for everything in my life i've never had a mentor i've never had somebody who to actually take me to a different place Mm -hmm. um like i i did win without him like in 2016 bo3 like (laughs) back when it was actually really hard to win i had like 10 golds or something on umg Uh, it was at umg and gb so that that was a lot and that was a lot yeah and that was a lot back then like that was like oh this guy's actually pretty good but i never had somebody to like take me to a different level and then when iw came out mutex somehow took a chance on me because i asked him to play a tournament and Mm -hmm. and he just liked me because my personality i mean i was decent at the game but he liked me because of my personality was laughing but then he started teaching me all these things and what and he would like get like tell me not to do stuff i never had somebody tell me not to do something in a situation because i'm always the leader like Mm -hmm. and i've always been the leader i've always been the person that teaches everybody things because i figured out for myself so so as a competitor mutex very very big person and has brought me to um like a really good level as a competitor um for like health wise uh teammate that's for health wise i'd probably say gusify um he's like a really like he's probably my, he's like my best friend uh i mean he definitely is my best friend we we we've uh we're it, it's funny because both of us are very similar in the sense that we don't really like well i swear a little bit but we try not to swear too much we're both pretty big christians we're both like pretty positive for the most part so like it's funny because a lot of times both of us will have something going on in our life and we've gotten better at this but like none of us will talk about it we'll always like try to like just avoid all of like conflict and all these things but like something that we've been doing a lot recently is just like really just being there for each other for a lot of things and to like have somebody that's like what a friend and a teammate and somebody that's just by your side no matter what and like in game and out of game i think that's that's chemistry on a different level. Like I, I trust him with my trades and I trust him with my, all the things that are going on in my life. So I think that that's super important. Yeah, bro. That connection is something that not many people get. And if you get the chance to do it, man, you, you should definitely try to experience oh, yeah. that because I'm sure that can just wreak so many benefits, you know, having that energy bouncing off of each other, you know, back and forth, just going crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and something I will I will say is that it's very 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 important. Um, I said this a little bit, but to pick and choose who you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. Um, like, yeah. like if you're like I mean, word to Gary V. Like if you're even if your family is like super toxic, like 
like you can love them you can be there for them if they need you but like yeah. you need to pump yourself with positivity and because it's your life you know what i mean like i know these people are in your life and they're mm -hmm. negative and they're like it brings you down but you can't let it like i think mm -hmm. that something that really changed my life this year was just like believing in myself even when i don't see action so like even on the days that i'm super negative and i don't see a future for myself i don't see anything i just de delusional confidence just out yeah. the roof i just decide i'm making that decision <laughs> that i know i will be successful you know what i mean bro that actually uh it plays perfectly have you ever read the book called it's called the war of art i actually have that in my room like Do you right really there. so you I'm obviously know about the powers of uh resistance i didn't i didn't read it yet oh I didn't read it well yet. you definitely dope. should because uh exactly what you're talking about uh, plays uh, hand in wait, hand. what's it about okay so basically the the main basis of it is there's a power called resistance you know every time you want to sit down and do something you're like oh i want to play the game today but i, I you know this is what's holding me back you know you make excuses for yourself there's you know it, it can play into a bunch of different things obviously it's not just gaming but that feeling that you get that's telling you no don't do this is the world's way of telling you like this is actually what you should be doing but not everyone's going you know there's only that one percent of people that are successful only that one yeah. percent of people break that, and only that one percent of people realize that's just me being lazy. You don't get that motivation from sitting there on the couch. You have to get up. You have to take that action, and then you start feeling those effects, yep. and then you start getting the ball rolling. So yep. if you just say fuck it and rip that bandaid off, that's why cold showers are a big wave in the personal development scene because that same thing. You know, if you just say okay, I know there's this there's resistance, but I'm just gonna fight that flinch. I'm just gonna go for it anyway. Nine times out of ten, the results are going to pay by tenfold. So um, I definitely would recommend cracking that book yeah. open, reading a chapter every night, and both yeah, you two so get that fucking audio book and throw it in your ears while you shoot your bots because it is a very powerful book. You don't just have to be an artist to benefit. And, it, and it's so it's so important. I mean, like, and just like I said before, like, just believing in yourself before you see results is also just, like, the most key. Like, if I've seen anything this year for myself, like, like – if I was discouraged and if I got down on myself for like, like <clears throat> me, like not performing in trading, I would never have started to see results for the last few weeks. I, I'm actually starting to make money off of it. I'm actually, and it's, it's some 98% of people failing 98%. That's like, yeah, that's crazy. That's a lot of people, man. That's a like, lot I'm of people. I'm actually starting to win. So I'm like, okay, but this entire six or so months leading up to that, I had to believe in myself before I actually saw the results. I actually want to write a book on delusional confidence. That's you like, should. Yeah, and like, I, I think, yeah, uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, I don't know, like, I've been really blessed when it comes to, like, my mindset. I don't know, I don't, I think it's a product of my father, honestly. Like, he's, you know, he... A hard worker. In, in a, like, accident, nah, I wouldn't say accidentally, but indirectly, he really kind of, like, instilled this kind of mindset that I've had. I, mm -hmm. I don't, delusion, delusional confidence isn't bad at all. Like, it, yeah. you know, I mean, to an extent, it can be, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, I, I think it's really important. Uh, to have that kind of level of that like faith in yourself to do like yeah. literally anything like I'm not kidding this helps being because like I consider myself um like very good at Call of Duty and I know how good I can be at Call of Duty and it helps when I get to a certain point in something because you know you can get to a certain point in one thing and then my mindset's like okay if I got to this point in this thing why can't I get to that point in literally anything exactly. else and That's exactly um what happened to me. yeah so it, it's like man like it, this kind of happened to me around World War II and like ever since then I've just like been so confident in everything I've done, mm. and uh, yeah. But I mean, just to quickly go back to a point that Max made before, you know, your connection with Gus, stuff like that. Um, I was thinking about it, and for me personally, right, I've I've never really seeked out for myself networking when it comes to like friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Which um, they've always kind of, I've always just kind of like surrounded myself with people that I've liked and I you know I think this is like a downfall but at the same time it's like a good thing I think I surround myself too much with like friends because like um I've always surrounded I've always been good at kind of like feeling I mean I'm sure you guys can agree to an extent I've, I've always been good at feeling other people out and seeing how like kind of quickly how they are as a person so I could tell right away like how Max was obviously I didn't know you perfectly John, I don't know you like incredibly well. We're not like best friends, but like you know, I'm I'm chill with you. I think of you as a friend. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with you, Kobe. But like, I can kind of tell with people like how they are as a person. Yeah. And uh, in this community with a lot of people who are not, the, you know, not the greatest, you know, I think it's really important to be able to pick and choose like and you know them for who they are. But something I've kind of came at fault with is that like having 
you know, I, I've been doing that a little too much. You know, I think I surround myself with really good core friends. I have so many people that I can trust with a whole bunch of stuff. Like genuinely, I've made, I have so many friends that I consider like really close, like you do with Gus that I met through the gaming scene. But I think I've kind of held myself back a little bit too much in that because I've surrounded myself in a circle of people who are mainly friends. And you're talking to the perfect person because I couldn't feel, I, I couldn't empathize more with that. I mean, that, I feel like, like I'm not, I'm not name dropping anybody, but there's a lot of people that I, that are very, very successful now that like, I couldn't surround myself with too much because they're pretty negative to me. Like to me, they're not negative people, but to me, they were really negative. Like to, yeah. to my standards of what I want, they were very negative. So I think that I could be in a very different place than I am right now, maybe as a competitor, as a player and stuff. So I think that like, I totally empathize with that. And, but I think that's also like really important to do that. I think, but I also think that it's very important also as a competitor to separate that. It's like, you can have those people, you can have those friends that you hang out with in TeamSpeak or in Discord, whatever, every single day. You can even play wagers, tournaments, or whatever with them. But at the same time, like business is business. Like if you yeah. you need to have if you need to have good teammates, and even if like somebody's really really toxic, if they're really toxic, I don't think they necessarily should be dealing with it. But at the same time, if they're really good, you got a good team, you got to roll with it. You got to suck it up, bite the bullet, sure, and, yeah. just, and just better yourself outside of the game you know and just love that person for their negativity and who they are and see them see, like i said before like see them for like the reasoning behind why they're negative you know what i mean yeah so in what ways do you think if you have that negative teammate that you know like you could just sit down and tell them like this is how you could change this and you would be the perfect teammate yet yeah, it's it's so much easier to say to do this than to actually take that action yeah. and um what ways do you think as a team that you can build that trust in that player you know that player has to trust you guys to take your word to actually take action so what do you think are some ways that you can help your teammates improve outside of game you know well for me i think a lot of the times when i see that there's like a really negative teammate and you got like a pretty good group of guys besides that a lot of them give them shit like the whole time and i find that that is what causes a lot of his negativity because he has to he has to defend himself mm -hmm. so he's like oh you're talking trash you're like stop being negative kobe stop being negative and then you're just sitting there like i'm not being negative i'm not doing this and then he just starts fighting you back so i think a lot of the times just like not necessarily enabling him in but at the same time just kind of maneuvering around it and like if he says something super negative be like oh i don't think that way you know what i mean like we got to focus like like i'm a big thing like pisses people off a lot of times but in game i'm like Liam knows this. I'm like, it's all good. We got this. All good. We got this. I say this all the time. It pisses so many people off because they're like, dude, I just want to focus on the game. And I'm like, listen, I just need us to regain and like actually focus on the game. Communicate, yeah. Yeah. And, what are you gonna I was, say? I was gonna say it's crazy because that's how I am. Like we've been, especially uh, in the cup. Like we ended up losing 33 to 250 to Equip's team, mm -hmm. and like it would be like we were probably down like. 15 to like 200 and i'm still sitting there i'm like guys comms yeah, like yeah. keep comms hot like like told us yeah the the game. Yeah, yeah and and it's so i feel like it just like some people can deal with the teammates that yell at you like i'm somebody that like no matter like i prefer being yelled at because that's how like i'm gonna correct it better because that's just personally how i am yeah. um but i know that i also know how to read how other people like so for example like we talked about this in I think the second podcast uh, about how like I know John's more of a you can't really scream at him like hey you did that wrong just fix it like you got to sit there and you got to break it down a little bit yeah me too um, and then I think so I think it's just I think you can deal with toxic teammates but I think there is a certain point where it gets too conflicting um, so again like you have me who's sitting here like guys like yeah we're losing. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're about to get thirty point club, but still, like, keep keep comms hot. It's still a game. It's not like we're losing money off of this. Like, it's a free entry Challengers Cup. Um, and then, like, once the game ended, I was like, all right, like, time to regain. And then everybody was like, oh, we don't want to get embarrassed. It's like we just got thirty three point club. Like, mindset. So, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna. We're, so it's a mindset. It is. Yeah, and it really frustrated me because to me, that's from a networking perspective, that's five guys who like like i remember um we were talking i was talking to marco about this he was like he was like it doesn't matter that you went neutral against them it doesn't matter that you were hitting your shots against them it was, he was like what matters is that they're going to remember you as the kid that 
didn't fit that was on the team that didn't finish the series just because yeah. they lost. And so yeah. it's like, I mean, I think all all four of us can agree. Kata is kind of a, um, along with name over skill, it's also kind of a dog fight for trying to get to the top. Like yeah. It, yeah. whether whether we want to admit it or not, you kind of do have to jump off of people's names if you want to be successful. 100%. And I think getting a bad rep from people who are almost there already doesn't really help your case. 100%. And, like, I also think that, like, like kind of back back to what you were saying, like, I, I just think it's, like, I, I think just kind of, like, keeping calm and, like, actually, like, keeping your comms up is, like, super important. Because at the end of the day, you're all about – you're supposed to – everybody's playing to win. Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you're down 30 points. If you still can win, you have to believe you still can win. Who cares if I think you're that, double like, I, I, that That's yeah. what I love playing with Gus about because he never gets negative. Like, both of us are very similar in the fact that we never lost until the game, until we, uh, for S&D, we, we see that six. We never lost until we see that six, ever. We get down 05, we still have a chance to win. And we could be getting pissed off, frustrated, everybody does. But we ne- you don't lose until the scoreboard actually says that you lost. And I think that's what's super important. That's why I actually really like the, like, you encourage your team like it, it, it's also like it's also like yeah like, it, like it's not a fun trait when like you hear people screaming in your ear like i think i think that uh like a lot of the times people get really frustrated like you said because they're like oh we're getting embarrassed or something like that but like at the end of the day i think you need to like calm your pride because if you actually want to get good like you can learn a lot from getting shit on like you really can so much like, oh my and, god and i think one thing uh, again, not name dropping, but that specific teammate, I remember one time, so this team was, what, probably like a month and a half long, John? <laughs> Something like that. Maybe. We, Maybe. I, I, dude, our scrim record was probably single digits to triple digits, dude. We <laughs> did not win the maps. I just lost audio. Uh-oh. Um, I'm going to keep on talking anyways. But basically, <laughs> like, really losing team, didn't, you could barely win. Um, and this one guy, like, he would always have us get scrims. And one day John was like, well, why don't like you help us get scrims? And he's like, well, because if I try and get scrims, I'm going to get all these high tier kids. They're just going to shit on us. <laughs> it's like, dude, I want to get shit on. Literally. I was like, I would rather, I would rather get, I'd rather play equips team for a week straight than play the same team that we have been for the past couple of days, just because we can beat them in a couple of maps. And exactly. cause I feel like, I mean, again, MW was kind of a rough game because it was – like I remember Random. Liam – yeah, Liam was talking about it on my chat earlier about how, like, he feels like it'd be so hard to learn because it's just so different from core Call of Duty. But I don't know. I just feel like – I mean, again, there's definitely so much more to learn when you lose and get beat by teams that go on to play in, like, Challengers Finals and stuff like that compared to when you're beating kids who have five X's in their name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel like that definitely plays a huge part in it. And I want to know, obviously, there is ways that you can be super negative for the team. But do you think that you could possibly be losing composure in a good way that you would think? So, like, for instance, you know, you're just scrimming or something. And all of a sudden it's, oh, my fucking God, get shit on. And then it's, you know, you could possibly either annoy your teammates or what. So, like, do you think there's a balance to that? Or do you think it's impossible to get too hype in-game? I think hype's amazing, honestly. Oh, my I, God, I Max. love Hype is so amazing. Bro, Liam, oh, I, my God. We had God. Scrappy on our team. Dude, it, and this it kid wasn't would even just close. stand up screaming after he gets, like, a Let me tell you, I know Max can attest to this. I, I think out of our team, like, it was up there with, like, you know, Grant, like, Ran Lofa and them like, but like we rode off of hype almost more than anybody in the local scene. 100%. It was insane. There has been times where like me, Max, Scrappy, or Radio, you know, we've been down by like a hundred points and a hard point. And right as one of us pops a three piece, one of us starts up and screaming, it starts steamrolling. A hundred percent. And we somehow kept good com- like comms. Like it, you know, there's like there's like there's hype, and then everything falls apart. And then there's hype, and then the comms stay, and. For us, at least, it, everything steamrolled, and it, I, I love it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, feel, I, feel. I think it's also, like, really important for, like... I think there's times to get hyped at the same time. Like, if you're down freaking 
250 or 240 to freaking 55 and you're you got a three piece and you're getting hyped i think like all right well that's like, what's the point you know what I, mean? yeah, like, yeah. I think like getting hyped <laughs> at close games gives you the advantage every time i truly do believe that i mean also if you don't get discouraged if you lose the next round or the yeah if you get sweeped you know what i mean or lose the hard point you know like I, getting hyped really can put you in the advantage. I mean, it did for us. Like Liam was saying, like Scrappy would just start screaming, and then we'd start literally like getting quad feeds and freaking. <laughs> we'd just start steamrolling kids because people were like having Scrappy just standing up yelling at them. <laughs> so you were just telling us about your experiences at lands. What is probably your favorite experience going to these local lands now that they're that kind of underground scene is almost abolished at this point oh man so sad so sad, so sad. i don't even really want to think about that so yeah sad. right um so like, what's my opinion on it like what, no like what what do you think is probably your favorite experience or some of the most transformative times for you personally well i mean uh, the first local i went to was black ops 3 and i only played the 2v2 and this was when just as simp was coming up like just as simple as coming up i had no clue who he was at all like yeah neither did i like and i was like okay well i sat there for 12 hours at this gaming event because we made the finals me and one of my buddies and we won it we beat simp and um i don't remember who it was mm -hmm. uh selfie i think in mm -hmm. finals in the 2v2 so we were like what the heck like i mean we were just hyped because like it was over it was literally three o'clock in the morning we were just exhausted and then, like, I came to find out that I'm like, oh, this is actually a really good kid. You know what I mean? This kid started blowing up after that. So I think for, for me, like, one of the things that I really loved about going to locals was just, like, one, just, like, I mean, competing competing in an atmosphere where everybody has the same desire. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's competing against you. It's like, it, that's, that's just amazing. But I think, like, just the networking, so fun. Like, I, I like, meeting all the friends that I made, uh, like, Liam and, like, like honestly like there's so many local kids like i think that was just like one of the best things that i i had with locals like i'm definitely gonna miss that a lot like a lot because that was just super fun just getting the opportunity just to chill with everybody for the day and just play and have people scream right next to you <laughs> like standing up screaming and getting that height you know what i mean and playing because we all love the game you know mm -hmm. so do you think that there is a possibility for locals in the future uh, obviously there are several safety precautions that could be taken. I can mm. sit down and talk to NJ Rod and literally tell him word for word what he could do, and I guarantee he could run a local land. But what do you think is the possibility? For NJ Rod, I think I think Rod's done. Yeah, no, I think for Rod's sure. been done for a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think I think that local scene, unless one of the twins or somebody picks up it in a few years or so, or in a year or two. Um, I think it's pretty done. I think like mm -hmm. maybe like all the the Helix or ETG. I think that could still happen. Um, I think that it's not gonna happen anytime soon though. So, yeah. how do personally, you personally? Yeah, all right, I'll go. I'll go quickly. But um, personally, for me, like with that, just like real quick, I, sad as is, I think like really East Coast locals are like very close to like kind of like a on off like yeah we have yeah. helix and that yeah there's etg but compared to nj rod man they have n everything's like so not it's not nothing's organized you're waiting there four hours in between matches i mean you know the one good thing about rod i wish he didn't like push it as fast as he did sometimes so we could at least enjoy what, that we're there but the, he was so like in control of everything it would be done and by five o'clock six o'clock like Dude, every he was like he, every single time you can be there. You can uh, Max can attest this. He was always talking about, all right, guys, we gotta set a new record. We gotta set a new record when we're finishing. Like, no, I love Rod. He'd say that, and then like we'd also be in like semifinals or something. And he'd be like, oh yeah, you're gonna like we're like, oh, can we play best of five? And you're like, no, 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 no. And like the two v two is like, no, nah, you have to play one and done finals. Yeah, like, we, yeah we were like, we were like, it, yes, bro. I remember the my like the first dubs that I won. It was a best of three, and then um I think it was like World War Two. He was like, not one and done, one and done, man. We're trying to get out here by six. I'm like. Damn, like, <laughs> let me fucking finish. Like, I mean, but uh, I don't know. I don't think most of these local scenes, like, they have no control over the, like, the people. They, you know, they can barely control their like their staff to get things going. So, yeah, I think sure. it's I especially with everything with coronavirus. I think it's 
So what kind of effect do you think that takes on to the COD community as a whole? Because obviously that was a huge motivation for people was going to these local events. It was a huge competition to see these people that you were, it, it was almost like going to high school, man. A lot of these yeah. communities were super clicky and you know, it really did just like simp built some of these pros. A lot of people came up from these communities and now that they don't have that, you know, community to compete and go against, what do you think is going to fill that void? And is there a possible way? I don't know if you can, to be honest. I think that this year has been really rough because change is the definition of 2020. Like uh, people oh, yeah. have had a really crappy year. People, some people have had a good year. I think I've had a bad year circumstantially, but I've changed a lot, and I think that's good. So I think that um, you can look at it a few ways, but I, I think that I think that. I don't know if there's going to be anything like that for this COD scene anymore, um, which is a little hard, especially for me, who's like grown up going through these things pretty much like a part of my development. Like as a freaking, I think my first, my first local, I was 15. I think mm -hmm. like, that's crazy. I'm 21 in a few days. Like yeah, I'm almost 13. Crazy. Yeah. Like, and so I think that um, I don't know if there's going to be an opportunity for people to get to do that coming into this, these next few years. Cause I think that, regardless of what you believe about uh, the C word, I think that um, I think that it's mainly media's pumping a lot of crap into it. So I think it's not as bad as it is. I know it is a bad thing, um, but I think that that's going to mean that for the next few years, a lot of people are still going to have a lot of fear with this stuff. So yeah, yeah I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, no, it really is hard seeing such a legendary era go so down in history man it, it really is such a, a crazy thing to think about is the fact that this all happened in the same year is just such a big coincidence because like just going back in the history of competitive call of duty i know personally i found out about it back in mw3 so i really saw it when mlg was first being formed yeah. in very infancies you know all these people were really just trying to build the rules of it and going from that to a real structured thing the whole underground scene like is pretty much like i said earlier abolished so how do you think that like i was saying earlier it really affects the way someone can come up you know there is the challenger scene there is that whole you know path to pro but what other ways do you think someone could really make it other than just doing that or do you think that's the only way i think i think nowadays like I think there is a lack of importance in networking um, that a lot of people don't see. So like what a lot of people did, like, I mean, Simp, the majority, he was a good networking, but the majority of the reason he blew up was because this kid went on, I don't even know, 20 something Pete winning these events. So a lot of locals, people, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this guy won a billion locals. I'm like, oh, okay, this kid's really good, you know? And then he started streaming. So he's got the NJ Rod scene and then he's got all these S and D kids. And then like some people saw him playing respawn a little bit too. So he's got like multiple different scenes. Uh, and pros took a chance. Him. So I think for now that we don't have that, I think it's super important for one people to start streaming. I, I, I think um, a lot of people don't like watching scrims, um, but I think there is definitely a lot of people that do like watching scrims and just even in general, if like you're trying to come up one, you need to lay down your pride. And if somebody beats you, like be like, all right, listen, like, can I play? Can we play? Like, I, I think that's like, like I get, I get asked that question a lot. I think in my stream, like, how can I get play with good people? And like, I think that's a lot of people don't have a lot of good people to play with. And like, for me, it's like, if you get beat by somebody and you performed like, cool, like ask them to play. I mean, like, okay, worst I do is say no. Worst I do is talk trash to you. Like who cares? Like, it doesn't really matter. Like it really doesn't. So you got to lay down your pride and actually network, find people. Like that's what I would do. I would freaking play one v one wagers, and I message or every lose. person. Bro. I do it every time. Let I me message do every it. person. Nobody would play with me. Win or and lose. Then, and then one, one person, person decided to play with me, and him and I started playing. Uh, we went from XPs to wagers. We went from wagers to tournaments, and that it just spirals from there. Yeah. One person. That's all yeah. it takes. One good teammate. Bro, people really undervalue the importance of the connections, like you're saying. You never know whose uncle runs shit. Gary exactly. V preaches that shit. So, man, people are burning bridges left and right in this community. Haggy's one of the biggest names about that. You know, mm -hmm. he, he has all these people that he has tight connections with, and then he burns that bridge, and it's just gone. So people really need to value the, those connections. And what are some 
I, w I know you just gave some, but what are some of the biggest networking tactics that you think yeah. you can really give to someone? Because there is a very different way of doing it in this community versus if you were to search on YouTube how to network or how to brand. Yeah. It's very specific to this community. Well, as a, I think I personally believe every competitor should be have some sort of entertainment. So he should be a streamer. He should stream. I feel like most either should stream or do YouTube. They got to be on some type of content because if you want to get big, then I mean, like Sensor is probably one of the biggest gamers, but he wasn't like he just started doing YouTube and start, he loved COD and he just pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. And then like he was already a pro at that point, but he now everybody knows him. the whole community knows him, so he can network with everybody. You know what I mean? Like he literally has those connections because of followers. And I hate saying that like followers are really important, but they are yeah. like I think that um, doing giveaways on Twitter very very important people a lot of people look down on them because it's like oh like you boosted your followers but i'm like all right well if i can do a giveaway with uh brack i'm gonna do a giveaway with brack you know what i mean like and like a lot of people like don't even have the like i'm blessed to have connections like that you know what i mean but the people that don't like okay liam and grace great you guys gotta do one together you know what i mean just like give you like share your followers you know what i mean because yeah. you never know like and if you pump if you pump your stream like you get like I, I grew a lot of my following, not necessarily from giveaways this, uh, in BO4, but a lot of people that were pub kids and that were like XP kids and wager kids started following my stream and then they followed my Twitter because I plugged my Twitter in my thing. It's like, it's like, it's all these tactics. You got to like actually do the work. You want people to know you. If you, people don't know you and you're a good competitor, you're not going to get on a good team. I don't care. Like yeah. even if you're a really good player, if nobody knows you, like it does not matter and people are probably gonna think you're a weirdo too like they're like oh this guy's followed by 20 people like uh, like oh my god if you shot if, if that person shot your body like they literally like oh this kid's an anime kid he's weird he's weird this or that you know what i mean so it's really important to network gain your followers like i personally hate that i do but i look at people's followers i don't follow a lot of people back that don't actually have a followers you know because it's trust you know these people follow you they're legit like, all right, well, I'll team with this kid because he's got five something thousand followers. Maybe I can get some of his stuff. You know what I mean? The biggest thing is I feel is you know the new feature that you, it's all, you know followers that you have in mutual or whatever. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I catch myself someone follows me and I'll look at that and I'll be like, is this person worth following? Yep. I know personally I was in a position that I was talking to my friend about that I had two offers from organizations to join for content creation. And the very first thing I did was look at their following and just yep. to see what followers I had related to the point where it's like, do these people already know about me and it's not going to benefit me? Or it's, are these people in the community and these people are going to benefit me? So, yep. you know, that kind of connection is definitely very valuable. But like you were saying to the point with Sensor, why do you think so many people focus on streaming? But, there, you know, can you name very, name five competitive call of duty youtubers that aren't professional players that's really hard i mean like i i know some pub kids but there's no like i don't really know no many comp kids i, I like, couldn't do that really cool. no shot no shot you exactly you can do so that? oh you can't do that so like but you you see the timeline everybody streams everybody throws yep. their twitch on so what do you think it is about that youtube space that people kind of lack because i know personally i would not have had any of the connections i made i i personally got into call of duty and made the connections i did solely because i went to etg with a gopro in my hand the That's first awesome. person that walked up to me said yo you have a camera what's up you want to record for our team and next thing i did i started following them around i had a thousand followers before i knew it everybody in that community knew me even yeah. though I, I didn't even play i went to these events i was the cameraman i ended up winning a 2v2 that was on xbox meant nothing but and people were like they just knew me because of that so i feel like youtube is such a personal space that people yeah. don't really dive into in our community specifically and i think there's a huge void that what are some ways that you think people can really um lead that direction i know personally i'm trying to take that personal development route and one of my inspirations is i want to be kind of like the matt diavella of the cod community you i know? love that you know, that's kind of my inspiration. So what do you think some ways that people can really incorporate that into our community? So I think that, like, going back to one of the other things you said, I, I think that a, a reason that people don't do content creation is because they get discouraged, especially with, especially with uh, live streaming. 
like the fact that a lot of people have one to ten viewers really discourages them. But like if you actually like take a second and you don't look at Tim the Tatman, you don't look at Symphony and all these streamers that have ten thousand something viewers, even the people that have hundreds, like average Joe has got like a hundred something like that mm. now. Like that's amazing. You know what I mean? That's a lot of people. Like but even 10 is a lot of people. Imagine 10 people. Like, this is what I would do. I would think that, that I have, like, only 10, 20 viewers right now. But that's, like, imagine 20 people sitting in, in a room behind me stand, staring at me playing a video game. Like, you have to, like, if you, you can't look at the followers. Like, Gary Vee says this all the time. You have to just grind because you know the outcome is greater than, like, your, your circumstance. Yeah. You know that, like, even though I don't have a lot of YouTube uh, subscribers, I don't have a lot of Twitch subs or followers or viewers, you have to be like, I have a dream. I know what this could bring me. I know where this can bring me to. So I'm just going to look at that goal. I'm not going to live in the future, but I'm going to look at that goal, and I'm going to grind for it. I think that's like so, so, so underrated. So I don't know if I answered that question because I was kind of going off to your okay. other question, but no, it's very think... important. Don't focus on subscribers. Do not focus on followers. Do not focus on viewers. If you know something is good for you, you got to work hard until you see it. Delusional confidence. They got to believe in it before you see it. You know, actually, uh, I, I saw this thing on Twitter. It's absolutely crazy. It was like, if you average five viewers over a course of a week, you are in the top percentile of Twitch streamers. If you average over 10, or it was like 12 or something, you were in the top 0.1 percentile. It's wow. absolutely crazy how hard it is because of like recently, or like how, not not hard, but like how much of the climb is to Twitch. Because there's so many people who stream with one to five, like to five follow, or uh, viewers a day. And it's like, um, for me personally, um, because of my following or like the, everyone knowing me in the NGRA community, was it, once I started streaming and got consistently, there was times where I would average like 20, 25 you know viewers and um and when i would enter tournaments it, you know I, there's been times where i peaked at like 100 i think the most i ever got was like 120 and like a like a 50 dollar 100 dollar chow with like um you know renown yep um you know i had a lot of viewers and and, and after that it started snowballing and and i eventually stopped but it was at a point where you know i would scrim for a local and i was getting 30 35 viewers and it felt really yeah, good i wasn't making game. money i wasn't making money but just seeing that viewer count go up it was really like so, really so, fun to fun to see. It feels so good. And like, does hundred percent. It's part of the reason that I quit, like in MW. Like I like I wasn't getting a lot of viewership. I wasn't getting a lot of subscribers. I wasn't at where I used to be. Like you can't look back. Like I think that's such a really important thing. Like if you were ever somewhere six in success, you can't look back. You can't worry about your people, yeah. like your past teammates. You can't worry about your current subscribers. I mean, we've talked about this already. You got to just focus on your idea. What could be in the future if you work hard right now? I think uh, when it comes to stuff like that, um, you know, John, I applaud you for doing YouTube. Like, I, I don't even know where to start. You know, Twitch, yeah. uh, you know, I can understand because I can do things where I can, like, you know, I can stream a tournament or I can stream, like, scrims. And, you know, I have people because I know because I stopped playing COD for six months and I come back and I stream this league and I'm getting 20 viewers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, that's not a lot. Do you know what I mean? But, in the you know, I'm comfortable with going to things. You know, yeah, there's right. not many people in our community that 20 people are going to want to watch him play something that exactly. could right. honestly mean nothing, you know? Not yeah. not any jab like, at you, like, but you could be playing a team scrim, and if you've got 10 people in there, like, holy amazing. fuck, that's 10 people that care about you enough right. to watch to you get, get shit on, watch you get better, yeah. watch you progress, like, you know, it's very rare. You know, 100%. That's why, like, I see... You know, like Colby, you, you know, you're streaming today and like, you know, I saw it and generally because like, especially since we've been talking a lot more recently, like I was like, oh, I want to hop into stream. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want to see you guys all stream. Like, uh, you know, I'm was definitely more connected to the COD scene than I was before. But like literally any of you three, like just streaming, you know, I like seeing Chris Radio stream too. Like all my boys who stream, I just want I just want to I just want to hop in your stream and just talk to you guys. Like, I, I know it was like probably like two months ago, Max, but I hopped in. I hadn't talked to you in like three, four months, you know, and I just said, what's up? You know, yeah. I use my Twitch Prime sub and you, you know, I've been so out of the, you know, the cock me, but it's just like nice to see my friends. Yeah. And, and when you have friends, like, you know, I bet when I'm scrimming, you know, let's say it, I have 10 people watching a good seven of those people are my friends. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I, I just, that doesn't ma that matter to me. You know, that's still 10 people watching my, my, my stream and, you know, it can only snowball after that. So I, I think uh, there's a lot, what were you going to say? Go ahead. Oh, uh, I was going to say, um, just a quick tip. For anybody watching that doesn't know this, and if seeing that nobody's in your stream or only two or three people's in your stream, if you're on the, I believe it's the creator dashboard on Twitch, 
if you click on that viewer count, it blocks it from your site and you can only see it if you hover over it. That's yep. something uh, viewers don't really bother me too much, but I found myself trying to, because we talked about this in the last podcast about how I kind of focus more on competing than streaming and that's mm -hmm. something I need to work on. Um, so like, I, I'll be a lot more quiet if I see nobody's in there. I just feel like seeing that number go up makes me like change instantly instead of trying to maintain that and try and hold that entertainer side out. Um, yeah. So yeah, so create a dashboard and just click on the little viewer number and it blocks it out. But if you hover over it, it'll pop up for you. Yeah, very important. I do the same thing, especially now that I don't have the same, like I do with the same following, but I've lost a lot, you know? Yeah, no, um, I know you were going to say something before Colby said something, Lights Fire, but... Uh... Well, I was I was going to say, I think it's super important, um, kind of just, like, to be, like, really kind to people, um, and treat people how you would want to be treated, because, like, and, like, I think that's, like, uh, I mean, if you treat people poorly and you treat yourself poorly, like, uh, relax, like, <laughs> but I think it's really important to be kind to people, like, I mean, I, I even think of, like, like, how important, going back to how important networking is, I mean, like, Asim or Asim, whatever you call him, the guy was a Twitch mod, bro. I've known him for six years yeah. since before anything. He was a g really good player, actually. Yeah. I used to compete with him back in Black Ops Three and tournaments and stuff. Um, and he's just he was just replays mod. Then he started playing with replays and replays like this guy's actually good. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. hello, and look where he's at now. Like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, all he was, he was he's a cool guy, good player, good attitude, and he just focused on himself, and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's something that's really overlooked. Just yeah. being kind and really just like focusing on your brand, focus on who you are, focus on your you as a player. Like humble yourself, grind. Like if you want to get good, you actually got to put the work in. But at the same time, like like getting discouraged on yourself is not going to change anything. It's not going to make you better. Like if you want to, if you have an, a goal and an outcome, you can't get discouraged. Like as hard as it is, like I've this entire year has been very difficult for me because I've had to, like I said earlier, like I've had to teach myself pretty much everything in my life. And that's hard. It really is because I've never had, I haven't had much guidance. Like I feel as if, um, besides like relationally with my parents, but I, so you got to believe in yourself before you see it. As I keep going back to that. I think that's honestly, man, that's a very beautiful point to end off on. I would put yeah. that on the side of a highway on a fucking billboard. If I were you, I'd invest that money. Cause man, that's a beautiful point. Thank you, man. Is there anything that you would like to say ending this at an hour and 17 minutes long? Oh baby, that one by nice really talk. fast. And it yeah, exactly. I looked up. Yeah, and they like, do. Wow, these podcasts go really fast. Man. Yeah. Man. I, well, first off, I did want to say thank you because I've always wanted to do a podcast, and I'm super honored that this could be my first one. Seriously, it's not um, going to be your last. I, I appreciate it, and I can. I just wanted to say to like each of you guys before we end off. I seriously believe in all you guys. I don't know if that means anything, but at the same time it doesn't matter what i believe you guys got to believe in yourself that is the key to success in life if you believe in yourself and you don't see anything who cares keep grinding you will see stuff Dude. i i i've i've had so many things in my life that i'm successful in and relationships and all these things but it all took time it all took time it took years sometimes so you got to just believe in yourself just grind believe in yourself so 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 important great job thank you man have a great rest of, of day everyone listening Make sure you follow Max on Twitter. I obviously have all the ads on screen, so you, you know where to find him. Obviously, he streams. We talked about that, so you know where to check him out. Hopefully, everyone listening took something from this, and I hope you guys all have a great day. You as well, Max, Liam, Colby. Peace Thank out, you. boys. Peace.